everyone. A very warm welcome to your own Silicon Valley Tech Talks channel. This is your host, Faisal Vatu from San Jose, California. Many companies in Silicon Valley have accelerated their innovation pace on AI since last few years. This includes big companies like Google, Apple, Meta, Amazon, and also some promising startups. Since the launch of ChatGPT last November, there is even more excitement about the AI work being done in the Valley. In today's episode of Silicon Valley Tech Talks, we'll be talking to Hassan Sawaf, who is the founder of a promising AI startup in the Valley. This startup is called Explain. Explain has a vision to democratize AI by enabling users with easy to deploy AI capabilities. For example, their platform allows users to select AI models from a range of options and then fine tune them based on the needs. Hassan has been a veteran for AI in the Silicon Valley. He has held leadership roles in Meta and Amazon on AI projects. So without any further delay, let's go and talk to Hassan and learn from the work he's doing on AI. Hi, Hassan. Welcome to our show. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great. So Hassan, for common people and for our audience, mm -hmm. can you briefly explain what core problem Explain is solving? What value for whom? Mm -hmm. So um, over the last few years, we saw that there is generative AI coming out and um, it is still complicated to build those kinds of capabilities, in particular for people who are not from the AI um, field. And um, Explain is building tools so that to make it easier for everyone to build AI capabilities in that, in that context and build solutions around it. And that's what uh, Explain is, uh, is all about. It is about democratization of AI, building AI capabilities from scratch, building AI capabilities around technologies which are out there um, uh, and ready to be, to be utilized for such solutions. Um, in general, our accounts or our customers are coming from many different areas. You have very specialized, very knowledgeable people in AI we are, which are seeing in explain a great way on how to automate certain processes. Um, for example, they need to expand in the language coverage, or they want to actually build certain solutions around their own core capabilities. And they see that they cut their costs by half or by 80% by basically going through explain and utilizing that. Uh, people which are on the other side of the um, spectrum are people which are non-AI specialists, sometimes not even engineers to begin with, uh, uh, but they have a great idea and they, know, and they need generative AI and they need AI in, in uh, general and it is for them then easy on explain with no code to build that kind of capability. Great. You, you talked about uh, democratizing AI, right? mm -hmm. but there is a, another camp of people uh, who believe that AI can get out of control of humans, mm -hmm. uh, AI can take over everything. Mm -hmm. So how do you reconcile your vision of democratizing AI with this concern? I believe um, with through, open, through open science, through conversations between scientists with each other, through conversations with people outside AI, um, um, uh, with the AI scientists, through good regulations and so forth, which are developed collaboratively, um, these challenges can be actually mitigated. And that's how I believe uh, we're, we're going to hopefully get to that. So there is challenges that some jobs are going to go away. There is some jobs that AI can get out of control by, um, I mean, challenges like bias and, uh, and, uh, and so forth. These are all real challenges. Uh, but through open conversations, through open uh, collaboration, uh, this can be mitigated. In, and in my opinion, um, with, with tooling, which makes it easier accessible how to use AI, how to build AI, even the people who are not AI specialists can actually get 
to the table through conversing through the uh, about these topics knowledgeable about AI in, in general. So they don't need to have a PhD in AI and yet still understand the process of how AI is being built uh, is clear to them and um, politicians, for example, they should actually be educated about this. They should have maybe experienced it a little bit when they sit at the table with the engineers, with the scientists, it's gonna be a very um, fruitful conversation. So that is, I think, uh, a, 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 an important component, the education part, the feeling, feeling the technology. Now about the job, a job uh, situation. Like any te technology, again, uh, there's going to be jobs which are going to be lost to technology, but at the same time, there's going to be opportunities which are going to be opened up. I think it, it's very important for us as humans, as the human species to continue evolving um, and learning how to utilize AI in what I do. I think it is a mistake to look at AI as a replacement for humanity or for a, a certain job. I think the person at any job is going to get better when they are actually are utilizing AI. You talked about some of the forums where people mm -hmm. can collaborate mm -hmm. and talk about AI. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any regulatory body, uh, bodies around AI which are putting some rules like how AI should be used, how it should be deployed? Yeah, I think this is uh, a now new field where companies and governments are coming together and discussing this th uh, th uh, thematic. It's very important. Some company, uh, some countries are ahead a little bit and others are um, lesser ahead. But you see these efforts in the US, in Europe, even in the Middle East, even in, uh, in other uh, re regions of the, of, the, of the world popping up. Um, there's new positions in the government actually which are focusing, focusing on exactly these kinds of topics. So I think a few years ago there was a Minister of AI in Dubai, for example, hmm. which is a novel. No one would even have thought about such a, such a position. But it's great. That means that we are actually taking AI as a serious. Hmm. We are also aware of that it is an enabling thing. It is also bringing with its own kind of... Uh, uh, we need to re rethink hmm. about privacy. We need to rethink about... Um, data and so forth and uh, now that all these governments all these uh, entities inside companies the same way we have companies which are most of the companies actually have um, uh, like uh, positions which are about ethics mm -hmm. in AI about uh, doing good in AI etc which is uh, which is a beautiful thing to see so 30 years ago when I was starting in AI I didn't even think about these things but during then the process when you start building AI and see what kind of impact it could have um, these things are starting to get more normal which is a which is a great uh, great movement great uh, direction for the AI models mm -hmm. they are as good as the data being used to right. train them right it's a garbage in garbage out phenomenon yeah uh, is there any work being done in the industry to uh, improve the quality of the data being used for AI models, uh, remove the biases. Mm -hmm. Is your company doing anything in that regard? Definitely, definitely, yes and yes. I mean, so we have, uh, we have, uh, whole companies are actually building uh, things around that. So for us in Explain, it's about building the tools to be identifying and mitigating this issue. Um, but this is not all you need. You need also education about knowing about what to look for and so forth. Um, and if someone is in the AI field, they know that um, the majority of work which is done today in AI is actually invested in data. You clean the data, you organize the data correctly, you label the data correctly, uh, you can generate better, better, um, better models. What is your perspective on, on AI adoption mm -hmm. in international markets? Mm -hmm. Are the challenges similar to what we have here in US or there are different dynamics in international markets for AI adoption? 
it's not only us it is a global a global need uh, to utilize ai in simple and structured ways the the um the distribution of talent is not uniform so you have access to the technology to utilize it you don't have the same kind of opportunity to improve on that technology as it as um, as, as as it should be but that's changing you see that i mean honestly covid having basically people learn on how to work in distributed teams uh, is helping us to keep talent where they are for example and um, improve everywhere the the uh, quality of talent to to build ai to improve on ai the thing is for scientists to improve on what they do is actually to set them in front of a real problem um, if you are in a country where you don't have the access to the problem um, sometimes it is difficult for the science in that region for example to go forward um, so it's 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 a matter of talent distribution it's a matter of i mean access to the problems one of the things which uh, we at explain are doing is we have talent on explain using explain we have a thousand close to 500 1500 uh, uh, developers which are working on, on explain in different in different uh, functions now um, the problems are coming to us from all over the world we are actually distributing that work to these scientists to these engineers to these specialists i don't want to say it's only scientists on explain it can actually be an engineer with the right tools they can actually solve some of the ai problems as well now uh, and we're distributing that again so it's basically a way to access to get access to the problems as well if you don't have that the scientists oftentimes just follow what is happening in the big community oftentimes educated by companies which have a large footprint um, everyone knows for example there is the Kaggle Netflix mm -hmm. challenge or other challenges and everyone is basically investing in only these problems so that we have for, for one problem hundreds of thousands of solutions but then the person who doesn't have as much of a voice and they have an interesting problem to solve no one hears because they don't have the brand and we try to like level that out a little bit through through explain everyone can come in everyone can pose a question they can actually start it they can actually in real life real time see what the solutions are and how they're basically solved and um, generate opportunity for everyone at the end of the day thank you very much Hassan, for joining our show thank you I, i'm sure our audience would benefit a lot from the insights you shared thank you very much thank thanks you. for having me